Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we have been doing a series on rating every team from 1 to 10 off-season-wise. And we're going to take a break from that because our favorite thing to do in the land is talk about trades, trades that are going to happen. They call them rumors. Now, I, I go into articles, try to find some insiders, try to find the best information as possible, and it has to make sense. Sometimes I can get rumors from insiders, and they just simply don't make sense. So I don't do them. Uh, there was one, it was Pasternak, traded last year. It was all over the land, and I was like, that don't make sense. I mean, ain't nobody got time for that. So I didn't do it. And, of course, Pasternak didn't get traded. The rumors went away. The reason why it didn't make sense was because he said it was because of the way they treated Krejci or something like that. And I was like, dude got paid a lot of money. <laughs> didn't sound like they were kicking him out. So I didn't buy it. Anyways, we're going to revisit a trade that didn't happen at the deadline. That is still all a flutter now. Um, and we're going to look at an article that gives a pretty good, uh, some pretty good insight on the possibility of this player moving, and that is Jacob Chikrin. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, most of the free agents are out now. The, yes, it's difficult for a lot of teams because a lot of teams don't really have all that much cap space, but I think some moves can be made. That, in, that involve cap space that can work for several teams. Also, as we're going to see in the article, it would the longer they wait on Jacob Chikrin, if they're really planning on trading him, the lesser his value is going to be, to tell you the honest truth. Possibly, maybe not, if you go towards the deadline, at the trade deadline, his value might be a little bit higher. But... So we're going to look at it from that perspective too. You can look at it from the deadline. You could do look at it from now. Certain teams may be better off getting them now. Certain teams might be able to wait till the deadline. But, okay, first of all, sub yourself up. We do this stuff all the time. I want to hear what you got to say in the comments section. I love talking about that. So if you haven't already, if you're on Facebook, you have to go to Perlo Wisdom. On the YouTube, just search Pearl of Wisdom. If you try to sub on Facebook, it doesn't work. All right, so just take a little extra time. I am almost up to a thousand subscribers. If you ever wanted to say, you know, like just do a little bit for your fellow man that costs like nothing whatsoever, go to YouTube, sub up to my channel. Once I get up to a thousand followers, this brother can start making a couple pennies on his YouTube videos, and that makes me happy on my insides and allows me to do more of these. That's my shirt, by the way. It's, I also do a live show called the Pearl of Wisdom Show on occasion. I throw in there. Anyway, it gets hockey season. I'll be on there more. We do play-by-play -play and all that stuff. All right. It's fun. Peyton on the radio does it and off-the-wall hockey. Got to check it out. Sub up. All right, let's look at... The article in question, which comes from a pretty credible source, I would say. Fan-sided. Uh, Tim Waugh. I, I love Tim Waugh. I think he does. I think he's a great writer. Uh, when I saw that he did something on this, I was pretty excited because I think he comes up with some really good takes. Uh, is usually fairly accurate when bringing up some sort of rumors, and he usually dissects it really well. Uh, Coyote's top defenseman, Jacob Chikrin, has been the latest Coyote player who has found their name making the... This was three weeks ago, rounds and rumors. So just three weeks ago, he was making his way around the rumors again. Uh, of course, before the tread deadline, it was all over it. Now, Craig Morgan had an interview with Jacob Chikrin, he, and Jacob Chikrin said, I remember this, this was a while ago, ask... Uh, if it'd be okay being traded, he said, I don't know. I'm signed for three more years. The trajectory of where the team is going and a lot of stuff that is important to me. I want to be in a position where I'm getting to play a week from now, not packing up. Okay. 
where the team is going can mean a lot of things. Does that mean is it going to be a contender or does that mean it's going to be in Arizona? You know, so either way, that's a little bit up in the air right now. They're going to play in a college hockey rink, which personally, I think it's actually going to work out really well for them. But if he's just talking about whether they're going to be there long term, I think the league has made it quite clear that they're doing everything they can for that to happen. If he's talking about this team being competitive long term or in the short term, then this doesn't sound too good. Well, it started before this. Yes, the talk of him being traded started before this. Uh, they when they started just tearing it down, they're doing a scorched town rebuild. You know, his name came up because if you're like you saw with Chicago, if you're really going to do a scorched earth rebound build you want to be really really bad to start off with having chicker in the does not help you with that so why it makes sense well they are in full scorched earth look he used it here chicker is a gamer he wants to win you know if he's not happy there it never works out well i'm just kind of read it. you can read it if you want but I'm just sort of going over it. If he's not happy there, it never works out. That is an immediate for sure. You know, he's getting a little bit, he's not old, but I mean, he's been, his career has never been really on a competitive team. And I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's something that he would want to do. So he'd want to be on a competitive team. He's, by the time this team's competitive, he's going to be 29 years old. Do you want to spend most of your career like, some guys don't mind, like Keller. But if somebody doesn't, I don't blame them. Rumors are rumors, but if you ask what a return for a player like Chickren's pedigree should be, which we're, is something that we're going to look at here, we're going to look at several teams that could be trading for Chickren. It would start with an unprotected 2023 first-round pick. That might be tough. There's a lot of teams out there that you certainly don't want to, and I like the way he said it. Uh, this will be tricky and leave some value on the table in some situations. But if a team like the Islanders, Stars, or Senators are willing to give it to you, take it and run. Absolutely. If you can get another top 10 pick from the trade, significantly strong. Uh, 2023 is a very strong draft. But this is the NHL, and most GMs are, are worried about looking foolish than, get, than doing a good job. That's a very interesting way to put it for some GMs, but it does appear to be that way. Good GMs, they don't mind taking quote, quote, risks. Uh, but a lot of GMs, they do. become. A, you could have a 2024 first, which we're going to talk, a 2025 first. Uh, why it doesn't make sense, I'm just going to reiterate here a little bit. I'm just going to go uh, alliterate, I mean, not reiterate. Reiterate means say the same thing over again. I've been speaking the English language since I could speak, and I still can't get it right. Okay. Basically, he's young. He's a guy you could build around, all of those sort of things like that, that we all know about. And in Chicago, they were all mad about when they when they got rid of Debrinkat and all that stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is, as much as I love Chikrin, again, he's going to be old when he's younger. He's going to be old, older. He's going to miss a lot. He's going to be like 29 by the time this team is probably good. And there's a really good chance you're going to miss out on a guy like Berard, or more of a chance if you have Chikrin. As much as I love Chikrin, you don't want to miss out on a chance on Berard if you're doing a scorched down rebuild. Something we've learned recently is if you try to keep a player that doesn't want to be there, you lose. That's right. I already mentioned that. It's in the it's in here. So you definitely don't want to do that. Um, coyotes are in a fragile straight state between the online slander about the temporary arena situation and all of those sort of things like that. The writing is on the wall for rising star defensemen. You're going to get a huge return. You may not want to be there. It, I would say it's leaning towards him moving on. Okay, so let's look at what everybody's getting, and then we're going to look at five or six teams that he could go to. All right, Jacob Chikrin. 
He is, and I've expanded this. He was drafted 16 overall in 2016. He's 24 years old. He's been here a while. Uh, the numbers, uh, he's only making, that's the other thing, he's only making $4.6 million for the next two years. So the earlier, that I think the earlier they trade him, the even more value he has in a cap world because the longer they have this player on a very reasonable cap hit. Chikrin's next contract, his contract's going to go way up, especially if he gets on a good team team and the likelihood of the numbers that they're going to be. I think it's going to be pretty cray-cray. So we'll go with uh, that's 4.6 for the next two years, he's going to be twenty. He's going to be a free agent by the end of it, which gives him kind of an option too. Because any team that trades for him is going to want a long-term contract from him. They're going to want to know that he's going to give them a long-term contract to truly get the value that they could, he could get from them. So let's go with uh we're gonna go with seven guys that's that's jacob chicken as is sorry i'm watching my tennis picks at the time as i'm doing this i do this completely on the fly by the way totally on the fly and he's from florida but he was raised in toronto which could be part of it 21 points in 47 games last year does not look good it was injury riddled the year before that, he had 41 and 56 in a very not and not a very good team. He had a little bit of an injury problem last next year, last year, but I don't think that's really going to bother anybody here, to tell you the honest truth. Uh, I don't think it's going to bother any managers. Just about everybody I know, did not or everybody, all just about every scout has this guy projected as being in Norris conversations in the future. So. What's it going to look at for a return? As we noticed in the article, it talked about a basically a, kind of like three firsts equivalent or equivalent. That's basically what Arizona has did, said. And the first place we're going to look at is the Detroit Red Wings. And the reason why I'm looking at the Detroit Red Wings first is because they were heavy and it was heavily rumored that he could be going there. Now, that was before they went out and got Ben Chirot and Oli Mata. So I have them very, a little bit lower on the list here. That being said, well, um, th they could still very well be in there. Oli Mata is, is, is a stopgap guy. However, they do have some very good defensemen coming up on the left side. Here's the other thing. Chikrin can play right and left. Okay. So... But they have Donovan Sobrango that is uh, playing in junior who's having a fantastic world juniors right now. Uh, as far as prospects are concerned, they have William Volander, uh, loaned players who are also playing in the world junior championships right now. Sorry, that that, that was yeah, DeBrango. Simone Edvinson, absolutely fantastic prospect. So... They've got a lot of young defensemen basically almost ready to play right now. And I feel like I'm missing someone else. If somebody out there can uh, tell me if I'm missing someone. But those alone, that the, the team is stacked. Now, Chickering can play on the right side. Bollander probably won't be ready for a little bit. And uh, you can always, defense is always something that you'd like to add. Now you have Moritz Sider and Philip Heronic, so he would probably be on the left side. So what would a package look like for Chikrin if they decided to go that direction? I think Sabrango, uh, no way you're touching Edvidson, no way. Well, I think Sabrango could be had. He's great. It should be Arizona should be happy to get a defenseman like him because he's looking really good. Uh, then... You could also go with, and this is another reason why I brought up Detroit, if there's one team out there that might be interested in a Tyler Bertuzzi, I think it's this team. Because Tyler Bertuzzi 
can't play in Canada, right? Now, that probably won't be forever. Canada will probably lift that sanction over time. Arizona doesn't need to win now. So the fact that Tyler Bertuzzi can't play in Canada is not that big of a deal. And somewhere down the road, they're going to get a really solid player for their left side. Does he make them better now? He does, but because he can't play in Canada, it doesn't make him that much better now. And I believe Detroit might want to do this also for their own, because they're getting to the point where cap is a bit of an issue now too, right? $9 million in current cap space, and they're going to have to sign Bertuzzi. Chikrin is, you know, $4 million for the next couple of years. He fits in well. So you could take Bertuzzi, Volander, and or, and or Sabrango, and possibly a first or second round pick. Maybe, maybe a first in 2024, and you get a Norris level defenseman for your defense for next year. I swear to God, if they if Detroit were to do something like this, they could be contenders next year as far as making the playoffs for sure. Like this lineup would be sick. You take Bertuzzi out of there, I think you can put Varane up there. Kubalik can play up. Ernie is getting has been getting uh you know, he can he can fill a role. There's lots of ways you can now you can bring Pia Suter up, put Cop on the left side, you can play all all three spots. Perron, you can mix and match like crazy here. And you've got now Detroit's got an amazingly solid defense. Sherratt, I'm not a big fan. I would put Chikrin up with Cider. Uh, Sherratt with Heronic, I think better. And Olimoda, uh, Olimata with Lindstrom. But that's a good, definitely a good enough defense to make the playoffs. And the offense is certainly good enough still, even if you lose Bertuzzi. All right. Tell me what you think, Detroit fans. Chikrin to Detroit for a package like that. Now, almost all the time I do this, people, nobody ever wants to give up their players. They want to get somebody for absolutely nothing. And they think that Bertuzzi and Sobrango should be enough. And maybe it's possible that it is enough. Well, we're going to look at what everybody else may offer. And I think we'll find that it's not. And already, uh, already Arizona has made it clear that they're, they're looking for three picks or three assets that are equivalent to three first round picks. Okay. Toronto. I'm putting this in there now. Actually, I think I should have put them before D Detroit now that I think about it. But it is hugely rumored that, at least from Toronto people, that Chikrin will go to Toronto. And uh, the only way I see this happening is if Nylander goes back. And that's basically what the rumor is. Nylander for Chikrin. So would that work for Arizona? When we look at the other deals, I mean, it's really hard. I love Nylander. He's only 26 years old. He's making pretty good. He's making a small, not that big amount of money right now. Now here's the thing. He's got a moderate no trade clause starting next year. So you could trade him there and he's stuck there. Now, a lot that would all depend on whether William Nylander would be interested in even going there. Possibly he talks. Here's something. Arizona may consider it. So when Austin Man Matthews becomes an unrestricted free agent, his buddy is in Arizona, right? That's something that they may consider. And thirdly, you have to look at how would he fit in the roster. They definitely, they would actually get cap space in this deal. So it's going to cost them probably even more because cap space is that freaking valuable right now. Yeah, Nylander is really good. But we're talking about Toronto getting additional cap space. If I'm Arizona, I'm going... If I'm Arizona, 
there's no way in hell I'm giving that doing that deal without getting at least a second or something out of it because I'm giving you cap space. Cap space is almost more valuable than players right now. And Toronto would probably do it because they need the cap space. So it'd be Nylander for Chikrin and a draft pick or possibly somebody like Timothy Lilligren or uh, Matt Sandin, uh, Sandin. Do you need Sandin now? If you got Chikrin on the left side, do you think Sandin's going to be as good as Chikrin? I don't think so. I like Sandine, but do I think he's going to be as good as Chicker now? So Sandine and Elander, and maybe you know Arizona evens it up a little bit with a pick or something like that. But you're getting cap space. You're getting a top pairing defenseman. Toronto fans, would you do this deal? Uh, I I don't. I think there's a lot of Toronto fans that will because what I've heard with Toronto fans is they are not a big fan of. Nylander. Some. Some people love him. Some people hate him. Some people are going to be all over this just because it's Nylander. Tell me in the comments section. Sub yourself up, Toronto fans. Tell me if you would do this deal. Sandine, Nylander for Chikrin, and maybe maybe Arizona has to throw something in. Tell me whether you want Arizona to throw in if that's necessary at all. I don't think it is because, like I said, you're getting cap space. Cap space is more valuable than as than player assets right now. Okay, next, Ottawa Senators, and this is a big one. It's, there's been a lot of talk about this, about Chikorin going to Ottawa. And I think it's possible, I think it's very possible that they, are, they could be in on Chikorin. I think they should be, no doubt about that. I, um, after doing some wonderful moves and getting Giroux, of course, the wonderful uh, Alex Dabrinkat move. Their top six is set. They've actually really got a solid top nine. It's just the defense could use some work. Uh, Eric Branstrom. I actually like Eric Branstrom. Is he any? Is he ever going to be any as good as Chikrin? Probably no. I don't think so. So that being said, I think. Uh, Arizona would have interest interest in Eric Branstrom. He has improved every year. Every year he has improved. And last year he probably improved more than any other year. He's a he's a good skate. He's a solid skater. He moves the puck out well. For a guy who's not that big, he handles things physically not too bad. So we could put Eric Branstrom in there for sure. <clears throat> now you're looking at three assets that equal a first round pick and I think I mentioned this before when we did this before if that's really what the ask is I think you're looking at Eric Branstrom Shane Pinto and the first round pick you might get away with 2024 first round pick in 2024 rather than 23 because that's just such a huge draft Pinto who is looking like he's kind of buried there. I think Pinto is more better than a third-line center. And eventually, he's going to have to move. They're going to have to do something to find room for him, and I don't see what they're going to do. Norris and Stusla are going to be there forever. Now, you don't have to do it right away because he's a restricted free agent. You can keep him on the bubble for a while. But eventually, Shane Pinto is probably not going to be happy with their line center money. So to get a to improve this defense, that is absolutely, I mean, it, it could use some some work. I think trading Pinto is not that big of a deal. So Pinto, Brandstrom, in a first in 2024, Ottawa Senators fans, comment in the comments section. Let me know. Sub up to my channel first, my YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, if you ever want to just do someone a solid, just be a good person, you know, where it costs nothing whatsoever, slip over to the YouTube channel, search Pearl of Wisdom, tap the sub button. I need like 50, 48 people, and I can start making a living at this. You have to hit a thousand before you can even start making money on YouTube. 
So that would be awesome. What's that through the brunch drum? If you could just do that, that would be great. Okay, next. Winnipeg, 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 Winnipeg. Desperately, desperately. Now, one thing we know, same as at Ottawa, Chikrin grew up in the Toronto area, I believe. So you say, well, why would he choose to go to Winnipeg to sign a long-term contract? By the way, all of this is to do with him signing a long-term contract. I don't know much about the dude, but Winnipeg does get a lot of guys from the Toronto area because if if they're strong family people, because it's close. It's, it's, It's a really short trek over to Toronto, like a flight or what have you. So if you have family there, you can go see them in the winter all the time and stuff like that. People go there for that reason. I don't know Chikrin all that well, but I do know he has family in that area. So I so I what I mean is I don't know where his heart's at, but it's possible. And sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, Winnipeg is gonna want to do something like this. They've got six million in cab space. If Chikrin wants to go there, they are all over this. No doubt about it. The three picks, they got a first round in 2023, 2024. It is very hard to find players that want to go to Winnipeg. That is just a fact. Everybody knows it. So everybody knows it. It's just a fact. If they can get somebody like Chikorin, they will probably pony up a little more than you would get somewhere else, which is another reason why I would put this a little higher on the list. Because I think Arizona could get solid value. Now it's within the division, which makes it difficult. But really, when you're not thinking about being a contender, this is the way I look at it within the division. I mean, your teams, the teams are going to get better anyways. And you've got to be better than the best, no matter what. If you're worried about giving up a guy like Chikrin to a team like Winnipeg because they're in your division... That means you don't think you're going to be better than that team four or five years from now with Chikrin in the lineup? Then just stop. Don't even bother trying. That's the way I look at it. You're going to have to build a team that's better than Winnipeg's no matter what. If they, if you, they don't get it from you, they're going to get it from someone else. You might as well get the return that's going to make you better as a team in the long run. So... Here's the thing. Dylan Sandberg, who's from Minnesota, which is tough to give up because for the same reason why Toronto players will play in Winnipeg, Minnesotans will. It's not far away. It's not that far away. It's a little bit of a distance, like, but it's not that far away. So it, it would be tough to give up. But I think in this case you would have to. He was a – he's actually a second-round pick in 19 – in. Uh, 2017 but he is almost for sure going to be a defenseman that plays in the NHL I've really liked what I've seen from him he's a solid defensive defenseman I think you could put him in here and make a case that it's you if you put him out in the market right now I think you could fetch a first okay so if they're looking for three first or equivalent I think you could put him in that category. The first round draft pick in 2023, and this would be the huge one. You may not even have to go any further than that if you add the 2023 pick. You may not have to get another one because those are going to be so valuable. Uh, Winnipeg isn't probably, you know, is a good chance that they're a bubble team or even miss the playoffs. If it's unprotected, I think that might be enough. And you get Chikrin. And sometimes you get, I mean, I think Winnipeg has to take chances like this to get better. Especially if they can get a guy that's willing to sign long term like Chikrin. This is a Norris caliber defense. You have nobody, they have nobody. Winnipeg has nobody in this lineup that's Norris caliber even close. Okay. He's going to be better than Joshua Morrissey right now. Right now. So, there you go. I'm going to say Dylan Sandberg in unprotected first 2023. If you want to go 2024 instead, I mean, you're go- either that or Villa Inala. 
One of the two. Samberg or Enola? Maybe Enola. Enola. Because Samberg is from, it's, you know, like I said, it's very difficult to find defensemen that stay. And if he's from Minnesota, he, you know, Samberg may stick. Where Ville Enola, he's from Finland. There's no really hometown advantage. But if you watch your 2024, you're going to have to find another first round uh, piece that is equivalent to a first round pick. So like maybe Brad Lambert that you just selected in the draft, which is really not a fun thing to do. Uh, but tell me what else you think. Who else would you give up there in Winnipeg? Uh, can they even do this cap space? Yeah, they can do it cap space wise. The guy's got a killer cap hit for the next couple of years too. I don't know. I'm doing this all day. All day. If I'm Winnipeg, what do we, what do you think, Winnipeg fans? Let me know in the comment section. Sub yourself up, and let me know. Okay, Minnesota Wild. Now, I thought I hummed and hawed about the Minnesota Wild here, because we know the cap space situation is difficult. They uh, they bought out. They bought out Suter, they bought out Parise, and they have like next two years, they're paying like $14 million on the cap. And you say, well, you know, we can't do it cap-wise. Well, you can. You've got the cap room for Chick Room. It's just you may not be able to sign other players to do it. The thing is I like about this deal is Chick Room's contract is so amazing uh, for some it actually works perfect with this because by the time in after two years, you're going to have to give a chick run a contract and now it's only 833,000 on your cap. So you're, they would, you would be able to do it. And there's been a lot of talk of Dumba moving. So I think with this deal, what would likely happen is uh, Dumba move. They move Dumba. In the deal, I think it's possible. Goligoski can move to the right side. Uh, that would not affect cap space, but it's also going to cost you a first round draft pick and one of your young players who are playing in the World Juniors right now and do and playing very well. Both of them, Ryan O'Rourke or Carson Lambeau. I think that's what it's going to take. So, would you do something like that? Uh, Dumba is a right-hand shot. I know a lot of Minnesota fans are not a fan of Dumba, though. I know that for a fact. Uh, I talk in the I talk in the forums and stuff like that. They're not a fan. Now, why would Arizona want this? I think Arizona would trade Dumba and get more assets from it. This would be the 2023 pick, O'Rourke and Dumba or Lambos. Minnesota fans, tell me which. I mean, would it be unprotected? You could go protected, I suppose, but I mean, you better not be with that lineup. You look, look at what you're going to have here. Uh, you get a chicken in this lineup. Who can play the right side, by the way? I forgot to tell you. He can play the right side. So you could put chicken instead of Brodeen, instead of Dumba, and you got chicken Brodeen, and then Spurgeon Middleton. That is a fantastic top four. Is he an uh, improvement over Dumba? Oh, hell yeah. He's way better defensively than Dumba was. And he's probably better offensively than Dumba. And then you still have that great top six in Matthew Boldy coming up. You might have a contender here right now, even though... You're paying seven million, fourteen million out on the cap to Parise and with for Parise and Suter, you can become a contender just like that. Boom! I'm telling you, Chikrin is that good, man. You look at his numbers, and you're going to say, "Oh, well, he only had this." It was just an absolutely diabolical team. He had an injury year. None of the injuries are supposed to be long lasting. In fact, it would seem to me that what what they were doing was getting him as healthy as possible. He probably could have kept on playing on a contender, but why keep on playing when you're trying to lose anyways? So if you look at his years prior, he looks fantastic. His advanced stats are insane. 
You want Chikrin if you can get him, I believe. All right, comment in the comment section, Wild fans. Tell me what you think. Next, finally, and I did this last time, and I say it again, to me, the best place for him to land is the LA Kings. Uh, first of all, they got all the assets in the freaking world. Yes, they don't have much cap space right now, but you only have to make up $3 million in this deal for cap space. Uh, I think it can be done. First of all, I think they have the assets to do this. Second of all, I do believe, uh, I do believe that, uh, whoops. I do believe that they are thinking of being good, like pretty much right now. They didn't go and get Fiala because they want to be good tomorrow. You got a, you got a top six that can shoot the lights out. Uh, it's a little on the on the on the small side, but they seem to get away with it. I mean, as far as how they play, um, but they seem to get away with it. Byfield is growing into his body. Kaliev should be. Who knows where he could be right now? I mean, the upside on this team is insane. The problem is they're a little light on defense, and they're using Alexander Edler as a 36 year old, probably more than they should. Chikrin can play left or right. He is better than Michael Anderson right now. Anderson can go down to this spot here, and he can play with Doughty. That would be an insane top two parade. Freaking awesome, man. And then Anderson and Mount Roy, that is pretty good, man. That is really good, especially for the offense that they have. I think I... I'd say this is fantastic. Um, and then, of course, Dursey's still sitting there. Dursey is just, he's probably going to take Matt Roy. you got a, a, a pretty solid top six here. So what's it going to cost? 2023. Might be able to get away with protected. First round pick. Better make sure you have that, right? Yes, you do. Uh, and then just mix and match your, you got mix and match. You got, uh, Velarde, Gabriel Velarde kind of wants out anyways. He was a first round pick. They're saying three first round picks are equivalent. Now I don't think Gabriel Velarde at this moment would garner a first round pick on the market, but you could put him in there and get away with it and not really be hurting all that bad to do it. Uh, Jordan Spence, I, I think right now the way he almost almost a point a game last year as a twenty one year old in the AHL. So you could go Spence, Alex Turcotte, Velarde, a protected first. I mean, I'm not saying you got to do all of these, but you can mix match several of these. I'm just saying that LA would have the most leverage. And ability to grab this guy. And if I'm them, I'm freaking doing it. It's time, man. You get, they, they're full of prospects. Jared Dolan Anderson. Turcotte doesn't even look like he's, he's panning out that much. You could go Turcotte, Filardi, who, who really need to turn their careers around right now. Uh, Jordan Spence in a first-round pick. And I don't know if there's too many teams that are going to compete with that. Of course, this is a signed Chikrin. And I don't know why Chikrin wouldn't want to sign in L.A. right now, to tell you the honest truth. This team is going nowhere but up. The rebuild is pretty much over. He gets to be part of a team that made the playoffs next year, last year, and is likely going to be playing, making the playoffs for a very long time. They are my number one pick. Tell me in the comment section, L.A. fans, what you think of that, Apples. Comment in the comments. Sub yourself up to the YouTube channel. Get me up to a thousand followers so I can make a little chain. And I'm even going to perlo dance for you on my way out. There you go. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.